Hey there, YouTube. <laughs> I didn't know how to really do this follow-up video because I don't have a capture card. So you're going to have to bear with the cell phone on the laptop screen. Some of you wanted to see this particular laptop working and performance test. If you want a more detailed performance test, go to Bob of All Trades or Own or Disown and they'll give you Electronics Mag 15 and this is really the same chassis so you're going to get the same performance keep in mind this is the 2070 Max-Q model not the 1660 Ti which the price this was going for it could have well been the 1660 Ti so that's why I went out and got it so I usually run this as a desktop replacement so I have it hooked up to an eGPU and on a like a laptop cooling pad but I know most of you who are going to watch this video you're going to fall into the camp of you saw this on the Canada computer website didn't know what an armory laptop was you googled around and you either got this video or my previous one my previous one was to prove that this is the NUC 9 Extreme laptop kit. So this one's just some general performance, final conclusions and thoughts and that sort of stuff. I don't really want to run a full long, you know, bar graphs because this is just going to be shot on the fly. No script, nothing. So the first thing, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use a little bit of a roll of tape. And that's just to prop up the laptop so I don't block the vents because this is a, a rubber pad that it's on and I don't want to choke out the, the, the intakes are from the bottom. So I don't want to clog those up or block them in any way. Now I'm going to roll hardware monitor. get some game going. I'm going to use Company of Heroes 2 just because it has an in-game like a performance test. So I've already run it a few times. So I'm going to just run it once more just on camera here so we can speak while it's running so that you don't just have to listen to me it's blowing out the camera a little bit but I don't have a capture card so it is what it is now a lot of people are gonna look at this and say it's a gaming laptop and it certainly can game but these thin and lights they're not gaming laptops they're more like portable workplace maybe you have AutoCAD or something you do at the workplace and you need a graphics card or you're a student and you need something to throw in your backpack and you want to do some gaming you know when you're at the when you're on break or whatever but this won't compete with like a Helios 300 or MSI Raider or Leopard, those uh, like very thick laptops, the desktop replacement laptops that are rolling much bigger cooling solutions. So this is going to end right here. Let me just see what the frame rate. And... So I'm running it on performance mode and average frames right there, 64. Now let's throw this to hardware monitor and see what can attempt. Because a lot of you guys want to know if this thing was throttling at all. So in that short, I don't know what it was, a minute, minute and a half demo. It's already got up to 85 degrees on most cores. So if I were to run that game for about 10 minutes, you'd be sure that would have gone to 95. And I ran it on performance. 
So now if you can see at the top here, it's balanced, battery save, back to performance. That being said, is it bad? Well, when it throttles, you're going to lose performance without a doubt, right? It didn't do well. It did okay, I guess. And speaking of the laptop itself, what I like about it, I actually thought this keyboard was going to be terrible, but the more I use this keyboard, the more I like it. What I wish they changed was how the power plug is. Like, if you look at this power plug, they put the 90 degree bend on the back, which makes no sense. They should have just shot it straight out. I don't know, Tong Fang or Intel wanted it like that. It blocks, see if it goes on this side, it blocks the vents. If it goes on this side, it'll block your Ethernet, your Thunderbolt. <sighs> is what it is, I guess. Back to the laptop itself. I absolutely love the, the mouse turning off here. Really good for if you're playing. I have a always a gaming mouse on me, or in this case, a Logitech wireless. And then that's really good to just turn off the mouse pad so that when you typing in game, you're not just hitting that mouse pad and throwing everything out. Graphics card temperatures. Again, my... Uh, monitor is blowing out the K 73 degrees so that that's actually respectable if you run it in performance mode it's going to put the power limit to it's going to throttle at 90 degrees and 75 to 80 on the GPU 90 degrees on the CPU if you put it on balanced it'll start throttling it at 85. If you put it on battery saver, which is the mode I would suggest if you're in a classroom or like a meeting or board meeting, if you decide to take this as a work laptop, that's the kind of, you don't want to make a lot of noise. This thing, if you were listening to the laptop and not me ramble on, it gets really loud. So, a laptop cooling pad is preferable because the actual vents of the machine are really exposed and you can see the like copper pipes right underneath so if you have a laptop cooling pad that would perform really well configured here all I added was a 16 stick of RAM to run in dual channel which is really recommended because any performance you can get without adding heat to the mix will be good news and I picked one of those up for about 70 Canadian so all in all from Canada computers the laptop itself 1399 a stick of RAM for 60 plus tax um, it's really competitive and as a gaming computer, I have a desktop, but I was looking to rebuild it. But right now, with the prices the way they are with scalpers, it's really difficult to recommend building a computer. So I bought this just for the time being, and I'm going to run it like a desktop for a bit. And I guess farther down the road, I can either piece together a machine or just keep using the eGPU or even like I have a Vega 56 and this thing with the 2070 competes favorably. In certain titles it wins, in certain titles it loses. Up until it throttles, you will lose a little bit of performance. But the flip side on that is I can take it anywhere and it comes with a battery so if the power goes out if you're working on whatever you're working on, whether it be a project or a CAD rendering or whatever you're doing, it won't go dead. So that's 
save you money on buying an uninterruptible power supply. My final thought and conclusion on this thing is, if you're in the market for a true gaming laptop, you might have to pass on this one. If all you're going to do with it is gaming, this thing's going to overheat. I mean, it's going to throttle, but it's not going to burst into flames or anything like that. It's going to sit around 85 to 90 degrees when you're in the game. If you're in performance mode, it's going to be really loud doing so. If you're in balance mode, it's going to dial back the CPU to 85 degrees and keep the noise a little bit less. So I would steer you towards something like those bigger laptops like a Triton Helios 300. But in this thing's category, like the MSI Stealth or the Razer 15, this thing comes in at almost half the price of those ones. And with the newer laptops coming out with the 30 series mobile and AMDs, Intel, it's a no-brainer. Like, Intel hasn't changed from the next generation, the 10 series, and now the 11's coming out. The only thing they've added is integrated graphics. But because this thing has a discrete card, you're not going to care about what integrated graphics they're going to throw on the... For AMD, AMD's going to give you more performance. So if you're doing like a CAD, a rendering, or anything like that, AMD will give you more performance. But you're going to now pay a little bit more for, because this thing was on fire sale for a 2070 model. So I looked at these things before Christmas, and they were sitting about over $2,000. Some of them were $2,499. So Canada Computers brought these in. I, I guess they said, hey, we can do that much less, and they imported the box says it's manufactured November 2019. So I guess they found um, a lot of these things and decided, hey, we can import them and sell them at the price. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, just keep in mind, it's a thin and light. It's made to be portable. So it's a competitor to like a Razer 15. It's lightweight. And... I don't know if that, I have all the plastic on it, and the reason for that is because if I use Lysol and alcohol on the screen, that might bother some people that I still have the plastic thing. I don't know if you can see it, but I use Lysol, and if I were to put it on the normal panel, I'm going to destroy it. So I kept the plastic just so that I can use wipes on it. But that's my final thoughts on this thing. It, it's just a Mag 15 or an Element 15. So if you want to get the really in-depth review on it, just throw that into YouTube and you're going to get a really good Steve at Own Disown or Bob of All Trades. They'll do a really good job. I would stay clear from the larger channels because when I was doing my research on this thing some of them were saying it was getting good thermals and I don't know if they got a a unit that was hand-picked or if because I know electronics does cooler master gel and liquid metal on the CPU GPU in an attempt to bring those temps down I don't know what was going on there but I was not getting that and I saw those two reviewers were getting the same results I'm getting here so sorry I can't do a more professional sort of I don't have a capture card so it, it won't make sense if I just throw everything on the screen and the camera's getting blown out by the the lights anyway guys see you on the next one